Hey, welcome to Reviews on the Run. We're here at CES, deep in the heart of Tent City, at the World Series of Video Games. That's right. Today on Reviews on the Run, we're taking a look at Superman Returns, Excite Truck, Tony Hawk's Project 8, and it versus its resistance fall of man against Gears of War. Some of the games we look at in Reviews on the Run are intended for a mature audience. Please pay attention to each game's ESRB rating. All right, we're gonna be talking about all kinds of cool video games today, but let's start off with one that maybe isn't so cool, maybe not so super, as what a matter of fact. What are talking about? It's Superman Returns yeah. from Electronic Arts. Right. We looked at it on the Xbox 360. It's also out there for the Xbox and the PlayStation 2. I'm sure it'll be out on the PlayStation 3. Uh, what did you think of Superman Returns? What I love about Superman is that, you know, They've created the entire city of Metropolis, yes. and then some. The it's their own interpretation of Metropolis, right. though. It's kind of taken from the theme of the film, but, but it it's their has, own deal. But it is incredible because, I mean, it's like twice the size of a Manhattan, let's say. Right. But you can literally go all the way up and zoom all the way yes. in as Superman yes. to, the, to the street. I don't know if I've played a game where you can get that kind of distance and go right in. Well, they, so they the had to sense do that. of, right, they and, they did, and they did it well. They, well, they, they did it pretty it good, they did it pretty good. They but, pulled it off. I mean, I can't believe you're raving about this after we've played a game like Spider-Man 2 but Spider -Man, on, on you the couldn't go, original Xbox. But Spider-Man 2, you couldn't get that, but no. I liked when you were in Superman, being yeah. Superman, you could zoom so quick. I know, the super you got speed a is sense awesome. yes. of speed, yes. and, and then you'd hit like sonic booms and the, and the sound I, would What I did you. like about that is that there was a, a, a successive sonic boom thing going on. Yeah. You'd go super fast, and then, and then faster, continue going faster, and then Faster. You get a louder boom. I thought That's that was right. pretty cool. Yeah, I didn't like cool. that. So I thought the art you know, around the whole superpower thing kind of cool. Just like the movie poster, they have that angle of Superman hovering above the city with this cape flapping, and then right. you can zoom right down. I thought that was right. pretty cool. When you first get into the game and you're first doing it, is that like they had some kind of diversified missions? Like you know they had like meteors just that, to kick you off. That, the first you know, mission's fun. Actually, that's what I I'm like saying. It. Is yeah. they had meteors coming in. You had to hit them with your vision. And then like the second mission was this arena fighting game, which, is, which was really so weird, stupid. And, I mean that was where, like somebody, where did that come from? I don't know. It's I like they no wanted idea. to teach you the fight mechanics, and then they, and take, then they throw you're you into this some like, guy named Mongol and a bunch of different uh, I don't like, remember extraterrestrial this being in the movie. mercenaries. I know. So that was really weird. But again, it was something that was a little different. So I thought that we were gonna see a bunch of different diversified gameplay elements. No. But the reality is, is yes, that once sir. those things pass, wrong, all you're doing is flying around the city, yes. waiting for something to come up on the radar, yes. go down and bash the hell out of them for like 20 minutes. You do see Lex Luthor and Lois Lane, played by Kevin Spacey and Kate Bosworth, but they're only cutscenes. You don't really fight Luthor. Right. You don't really get to interact with Lois Lane or really save her. It's yeah, just I like to interact with Lois Lane. Boy, too bad you can't in this game. There's like the city damage meter, and if it yeah. reaches a certain yeah. panic, then yeah, you lose Superman the game. Superman doesn't really have a health meter because he can regenerate if he gets hurt. Which I thought was smart. I like that. that the city smart. needs to be saved, and right. that's the health meter. So the yeah. more that the enemies start destroying the city and kill the people, yes. you can actually try to save them and get that meter up. I'm tired of DC getting the short end of the stick in the video well, game hey, world. I'm sick of you're it. You're jinxed, my friend. I you're jinxed. I, we need a good DC video game. Help me, please. There's something I've got to get off my chest. What are you gonna give Superman Returns? I'm giving it a seven. I'm giving it a 5.5. Oh, come on. Just barely past mediocre. All right. On the positive side, all of Metropolis is easily accessible. We love the way they've incorporated the life city meter and how you can rescue citizens. But the coolest part, I think, is the supersonic flying speed. On the negative side, the missions are way too repetitive. Why is the second mission a stupid fight with Mongol on some alien war planet? And I couldn't handle all the collision detection problems and all the various quirks that are a part of this experience. All right, I'm gonna talk about a game for the PSP now. Now, I, what are you looking at? Oh, you must be looking at my super cool chrome-plated special limited edition PSP. That's right, only 10 of them in the universe got this one right from the president of Sony himself, because I'm special. No, actually, I just changed the faceplate. But anyway, I'm talking about online chess K. 
kingdoms. So you can play normal chess and the artificial intelligence on the chess opponent is always really good. And you know, talk about lasting gameplay. You can't argue with a game that's been around, I don't know, four or 5,000 years. But the cool thing is they have a bunch of different modes in here. They have kind of like this board game and you try to take over different squares and territories. It's almost like a version, it's a cross between Risk and chess all at once. Anyway, I think it's a fun game. I love chess. It's a new take on chess. I think it's cool. I'm giving it a 7.5. All right, stick around. We're coming right back with a look at Excite Truck for the Nintendo Wii right after this. Get your wrists ready. All right, now I'm talking about Snoopy versus the Red Baron for the PSP. Now, the interesting thing about this game is that it's pretty much an exact port of the PS2 and PC titles that also came out. Now, this is a really fun, simplistic game. It kind of reminds me of Crimson Skies, except maybe for kids and in the Peanuts kind of universe. But, you know, you fly as Snoopy and you're on your, you know, you're on your biplane and, and it's got a bunch of different really fun missions. It's almost like a whole bunch of really cool mini games strung together in this big world. There's lots of different things you're doing. Sometimes you're trying to fly through rings. Other times you're trying to protect certain buildings or certain ships. On the PSP, I gotta tell you, the graphics were really up there on par with the PlayStation 2. Overall, I thought it was really well done. I'm giving it a 7.5. Hey, welcome back. We're talking about Excite Truck on the Wii, Nintendo Wii. And when I hear Excite anything, yes. I think of Excite Bike. Excite Bike. Which was exciting on the NES. And was a Nintendo first party title. And it was exciting when Left Field did the uh, N64 game back in the day. One Love of our that favorites game. for the 64. Very great game. Excite Truck aspires so to be as exciting. Not quite, but right. not not horrible, mind you. I, I kind of got into the speed of the thing and the controls right. a little bit wacky and crazy. You control so. like this. Do it with me, come on. Right. Do it with and me. And then you do this too, though. Go like yeah, this you do this. Then. Yeah. And then this and this. Our audio guys are freaking out right now. <laughs> you shouldn't do that with a microphone. No. It's a slippy, slidey surface that you're on, so it's very forgiving. So you can go crashing through the trees and be trying to figure out and be stable and get back on the road, and it all kind of makes sense gameplay-wise. And it's not, you're not driving an F1 car, you know? Well, you're the, driving the, an off-road vehicle. Well, here's the thing is that I was very impressed with the speed of Excite Truck. It, it's very you fast. Know? I did dig that. But and the jumps I, are fun as well. The jumps were great, yeah. but I almost thought that it kind of hindered these particular controls because it was kind of difficult to control at the higher speeds, I felt. Yeah. You're, you're a big one for invisible walls. I know. We got invisible walls in the driving well, game well, now. Well, they're not really invisible because you hit it and it has giant yellow arrows <laughs> telling you where to go. So it's just like reality, really. I <laughs> just like it. Yeah. What I liked in the game is, is kind of the speed element when you hit the turbo and you go forward yeah. and you launch yourself. Yes. That was, uh, that was fun. Yep. It's almost like I'd like to see Burnout Revenge have more of those kind of sure. jumps and turbo moments. I wasn't expecting you know? the game to be as fast as it is. I didn't find there was a lot of like in-depth gameplay. No, I mean you that, get that you have with some of the other driving games that are out there. Tons of tournament I know, I know. modes. You get Where's the excite races and then they, they online. They, no online. Online. The, the Nintendo online? hasn't got the, the Wii online stuff done yet. What they have, they've split it up into like a challenge level where you have a bunch of different ones. You can right. jump through the rings or you can uh, smash the cars or you can go through different gates and stuff like that that get progressively narrower. Yeah. Or they have their Excite races that become progressively more difficult. And that's it. They did take a page from Xbox and you can actually put music onto an SD card. And trust me, you are going to want to change the music because the music bites in this game. Right. It's so heavy metal, rock and roll, guitar in your face, 80s cheese ball. It's just too much, man. Too much to take. But, you know, it, it's, a, it's a decent game. I just, you put the Excite 
sort of in the label, I want it to be a little more exciting. I want it, I want it to be a little bit better. I'm gonna give Excite Truck a 6.5. What are you giving it? It's exactly what I give it, 6.5. On the positive side, you do get a pretty good sense of speed. Pulling off those fiery jumps at the top of hills is pretty fun. The different challenges in challenge mode are actually pretty cool. And thankfully, you can switch out your music. On the negative side, we didn't enjoy the invisible walls on the tracks. We were hoping for some online play here. And like Vic said, the music is brutal in the game. And basically, the game's almost too fast for its own good for the controls, because it's sometimes hard to operate at high speeds. All right, don't go away. We're coming right back with Tony Hawk's Project 8.